sing alleluia, for Christ the Lord is risen. <laughs> Try it again. Sing alleluia, for Christ our Lord is risen. Sing alleluia, for death has been defeated. Sing alleluia, for God's love has triumphed over evil. If God be for us, then who can be against us? With a word of love, Christ is risen. So let's put your hands together, sing and clap, and remember, this is Easter Sunday morning.
Almighty God, what a great day it is here that we are with you and that you are with us, Father. We do want to pause to stop and think about what it is you did for us all those many years ago on that cross and how on this great Easter Sunday morning you rose, you rose from the dead that we might have life and life eternal. Father, we pray that in this hour that our words, our worship for you would be pleasing to you and that you would serve to open our eyes to the mighty things you have in store for us, for those promises that you made. Help us to be worthy, worthy of those promises, Father. Guide us now in this hour of worship. Guide us as we strive to praise you. Father, for we pray in your name.
Luke 24, 1 through 12. But on the first day of the week, at the early dawn, they came to the tomb, taking the spices that they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember he t ha how he told you, while he was still in Galilee, that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified, and on the third day rise again. Then they remembered his words, and returning from the tomb, they told all the, to the eleven, all this to the eleven and to the rest of, and to all the rest. Now it was Mary, Mary Magdalene, jo Jonah, Mary, and mother of James, and other women with them, who told, who told the, to, this to the apostles. But these were these words seemed to them as an idle tale, and they did not want to believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb, stooping and looking in. He saw the linen clo linen cloths by this, by themselves. Then he went then he went home amazed at what had happened. The word of God for the people of God. You want to try it again? Because it's Easter. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. All right. Just some kind of response. I just wasn't sure if y'all were asleep or what's going on out there. It's an exciting day, but some of us have been up way too early this morning. <laughs> we had wonderful worship out at Longest Lake this morning. So I'd encourage y'all to, is this working yet? Is this okay? Can y'all hear me? All right. Well. We have started worship, and we are continuing to worship, and I hope that you find ways to worship all day and just fellowship and be with your families because this is the day where Christ defeated death and darkness. He won the final victory, so he is King of kings and Lord of lords. So here we are. And too often we equate the Easter story with a triumph of light over darkness, good over evil, life over death. And yet, these mighty acts of Jesus Christ are all that. And yet, there's so much more. During this time, it's easy to simplify the Easter story and to leave it at that. We have these longer, lighter days of spring triumphing over the longer, darker days of winter. I know I've been celebrating that triumph. In fact, I celebrated a little bit too much this weekend. I worked in my garden all day Friday and yesterday. And my body needs a little resurrecting today, too. I don't know about y'all. <laughs> but it feels so good to be home and to experience spring in Mississippi. It's just gorgeous outside. All of the colors that God used in creation is just bursting out everywhere. And I got tickled because Helene in our office, she brought in a sweet potato a while back. And I meant to bring it out here. And she said, I, I think you can root a sweet potato just in water. And so she just stuck this, this sweet potato in this jar. It's a really pretty thing and sure enough we kept looking at it every day is anything happening nothing 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 and then sooner or later here come these shoots out the bottom and then leaves out the top like who knew which end was up on the sweet potato I didn't but anyway it worked I mean that's the power of creation that that is in everything God created and every year in this enormous spectacle nature renews itself and awakens in each one of us a resurrection hope a hope for something different. Throughout history, people have noticed the overwhelming and continuous pattern of self-renewing springs. Somewhere in ancient time, this perpetual cycle gave people all over the world that there's some primal struggle between darkness and light. A struggle in which after hard fighting, light does emerge victorious. Spring emerges from the dark winter. All that is dead must ultimately bring forth new life. That's the law of nature. Nature is cyclical. We move through the seasons, spring into summer, into autumn, into winter, and into spring again. We know this now, but we haven't always known it. 
And we used to understand everything in terms of God. When God was pleased with us, God blessed us with good crops. God is angry with us and sent us a drought. Every winter, the people would pray that God would find favor in them and let the sun come out and warm the earth. And when spring came, they thanked God for this miracle. In fact, there was a time in history where when every morning came around, people thanked God because they weren't sure that that sun was going to come up again. But as we human beings progressed and learned all that we could control and understand and all that we can do on our own, we forgot about God. We started to understand the weather in terms of barometric pressure and hurricane seasons rather than the wrath of God made known in a whirlwind. We, blame, we started blaming continuous rain on El Nino and global warming rather than consider our own actions and whether they were pleasing to God and the world created for us to be a part of. Instead of thanking God for the miracle of spring, now we look to a groundhog to tell us whether spring is on its way. And then we bless or curse the animal whether there are six more weeks of winter or if spring's coming. So it's natural for us to try to define this act of God, the resurrection of Christ, in ways we can understand it. So we talk in terms of nature and we repeat scientific truths like, Indeed, darkness does not really exist on its own. It consists merely of the absence of light. A single beam of sunlight annihilates it. And the sun does come with absolute certainty, and with it the resurrection of nature. The death of nature already contains the seeds of new life. Light and life must be victorious, and death and darkness are merely modes of appearance of life and light. Have you all read that in your science books yet? You'll find it one day. But such thoughts are common in our post-enlightenment era. So we apply, the, we apply the laws of natural life to our spiritual life instead of the other way around. And instead of applying the laws of our spiritual life to our natural life, we just keep on explaining things away instead of taking a moment to pause and to reflect at the wonder of God and to think about where God might be in all this. But this resurrection was no ordinary transition of life from one stage to another. This was a miracle. And to apply the laws of natural life to our spiritual life would be to make God no bigger than ourselves, something we can understand and something we can control. But God is so much more than that. And our Christian faith has so much more to say about Easter than just a triumph of, of light over dark. If we can explain away Jesus' resurrection as part of the natural cycle from death to life, then we throw away the wonder, the awe. We throw away the miracle of God that happened that first early dawn of Easter. A miracle is defined as any event so ordered that it pierces our dullness or despair and to convince us of the power and presence of God. And our God is an awesome God. Amen? Okay. Y'all are still awake. Easter's not a simple story of light triumphing over darkness, and Good Friday is not the darkness that must give way to light. Easter's not an easily definable transition from winter to spring, nor is it winter sleep or hibernation that stores and nurtures the seeds of life. Easter is a miracle. It is the time when the incarnate God, the Holy One of God, dies of his own free will and yet as a result of our human life and sin. No seed of life is spared in him that his death might resemble winter slumber. Good Friday is not, like winter, a transitional season that one must pass through in order to have new life. No, it was really the end. It was really the end of sinful humankind and the final judgment of death that humankind pronounced on itself. Easter is the miracle of divine love breaking in to save humankind so that each one of us could have new life. And that is the power of God. That is the love of God. The love of God that is so powerful and so transformative. And giving and receiving love is what brings about new life. You see, it really was the end that day. The end of sinful humankind and the final judgment of death that humankind pronounces on itself. We do that. 
So why don't we live in this new life God offers us? Jesus Christ rose from the dead, and he is alive and well in the world. His love for us has the transformational power to raise us up from whatever is keeping us down. His strength is our strength so that we don't have to begin this new life all alone. In the resurrection, God is once again reaching out to us, transforming our fear into courage, our doubt into hope, and our beaten down images of ourselves into the image of God. We have journeyed through Lent in this Holy Week to arrive at this Easter morning, but it hasn't been a journey from darkness to light, but a journey of miracles, where story after story we have heard of God's love breaking in to save humanity, to save us, by offering us new life time and time again. God giving the elderly Abraham and Sarah a son to create a nation, to call us God's own, And they laughed at what God promised them. God wrestling with Jacob to convey God's desire to be in relationship with us, even if we're a scoundrel like Jacob. God's providence bringing good out of the midst of the evil acts of Joseph's brothers so that they all would have enough food, even though they didn't deserve it. God using the lie of Rahab so that God's will might be done. God's love for humanity that was born in a stable more than 2,000 years ago to show us again through the words and actions of Jesus Christ how we are to care for each other and to care for each other in the way that God cares for us. God's desire for all of creation to be drawn back to God shown in the faith of a mother who wasn't Jewish who challenged Jesus to extend his healing love to her daughter and therefore to everyone, to each one of us. God's belief in each one of us shown in Peter's ability to step out in faith to reach for Jesus' outstretched hands. And God's understanding for our need of proof and reassurance in Thomas's Thomas's need to touch Jesus' wounds. You know, God never said to any of these people in our history that they weren't good enough or they were too sinful or had killed too many people, or needed to straighten out a few things before God could use them. God just spoke to them and loved them. And then they let God's transformational love change their old life into a new one. Even Jesus. Jesus was resurrected while his wounds were still fresh. He didn't wait until he was completely healed to begin a new life. But he let God's power raise him from the dead. And that is the new life that is offered to us today and really every day. There's no need to wait until we're perfect because that ain't going to happen. None of us are perfect. And thank God we aren't called to be perfect. We're just called to be faithful, to keep trying. All we need to do is to listen to God's voice that calls each one of us by name. And let God's love into our hearts. To open them and let God love us. Truly love us. So that we can be transformed into the people of God that we were created to be. Into this beloved community. Into the body of Christ. This is the very center of our faith and our worship. The story of God's whole history with humankind. Brought into focus in the passion, death, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. You know these stories of the Bible, and you know the stories of lives changed by God's transformational love and power. You know other stories, too, of people who transformed their lives from failures to successes, of people who threw away a life of worldly success to live a simple life with the person they love, of people who triumphed over tragedy, to claim new life for themselves. What matters is that we open our hearts to that same transformational love. What matters is that we understand that each one of our lives is connected to those in the Bible. What matters is that we claim our place in the history of God's transformational love. And what matters is that we believe 
We really believe that God is still working miracles in our lives today. And again, we open ourselves to the possibilities of what God might be wanting to do with us. The resurrection still needs witnesses. And now it's up to us to continue telling the good news that Jesus is alive with our very lives. And as the band, come, band starts to come forward again for our time of prayer, think about what that means to tell this gospel story with your life. With lives made new with the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The true miracle of Easter that transcends time and seasons and human knowledge and doubt and fear. Let the power of Jesus' love touch you in a new way on this Easter morning and transform you. Receive what God offers you today and every day, a new beginning, a new life, and a new you for the whole world to behold. Let us pray. O oh God of this Easter morn, you call us to be in relationship with one another and with you. And by your spirit, you've graced each of us with different gifts, music and poetry and wisdom and faith and prayer and healing and laughing, carpentry and cooking and cleaning and creating, art and language and teaching and sharing and listening, worshiping and celebrating with kids and so many more. For all these gifts by which you bless our beloved community, we give you thanks. And for any way in which we have shared in healing the wounds of the body of Christ, we thank you for the honor of being present and for working through us. And for any way in which we have shared in deepening the wounds of the body of Christ, we seek your love-filled forgiveness. Open our eyes, O oh God to perceive the gifts of new life that you've placed within each one of us and to honor the differing gifts of our brothers and sisters. Bless our hands and our hearts and our vision to work together for the bringing about of your kingdom, that in our differences we may find grace, in our laboring we may find justice, in our suffering, hope, in our togetherness, love, and in our risking, to love you and each other, true transformation. We thank you for the gift of this day and for the miracle that your resurrection brought. And by our acts of praise and worship and our acts of care to each other, may we bring about healing to the tender and wounded and strong and holy body of Christ rising in our midst on this day. We love you, Jesus. Amen. So as the band plays, the altar is open. So please pray where you are or come forward and just think about the new life that you're offered and take a chance. I promise love doesn't make it easy, but it makes it worth it.
Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Let's try that again. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. So go from this place as Easter people. Open your hearts and let God's transformational love in and let it transform you into the people God is creating our people God is creating you to be. Go in peace, go in love. Go in the name of Christ. Amen.